You're watching Vinyl at Puma Gaming. In my opinion, I would say that one of the Fallout franchise's most interesting vaults is Vault 111. While the experiment Vault Tech conducted here was meant to observe the effects of long-term cryogenic freezing, I think what's most interesting about this vault are its residents. As far as we currently know, Vault 111 is the only vault that has truly intact humans from before the Great War. While vaults like Vault 118 contain robo-brains that contain the minds of pre-war humans, only Vault 111 contains successfully frozen pre-war humans that if thought out, they could get out and walk outside like normal. However, as you find out during the Fallout 4 story, the other residents of the vault died as a result of the life support system being shut off. Today, I would like to discuss what would or what might happen if all of the residents in Vault 111 managed to survive the experiment. Now, it's important that we specify that Vault 111 residents were people who were cryogenically frozen and initially monitored by both vault Tech science and security staff during the first 180 days of the Vault's activation. Today, I'm discussing the people who survived the cryopods not what happened to the people that worked in the vault. So without further ado, let's discuss some of what we know about Vault 111 as it appears in Fallout 4. According to Vault 111's own security instructions, Vault 111 was built to observe the long-term effects of suspended animation on unaware human subjects. To achieve this, Vault Tech constructed several cryogenic pods and admitted citizens from mostly sanctuary hills and conquered. Now, it is possible that there may have been Vault 111 residents coming from other parts of Boston's greater metropolitan area. Um, there's an entry on the Overseer's Log for October 23rd that says, only Nordhagen was missing when we sealed the entrance. Now this could allude to Nordhagen Beach that's towards the East Coast, or it could be the name of a family or a specific person from either Sanctuary Hills or Concord. What we do know is that given the circumstances and experience of entering Vault 111 for the very first time, whoever got in would have had to have been very close to the vault. We also know that Vault 111 was maintained by a few personnel consisting of Vault Tech security as well as Vault Tech scientists. Security was tasked with the general maintenance of the vault as well as enforcing its rules, and the science staff's job was to monitor the vital signs of the residents in suspended animation. After 180 days, Vault Tech was supposed to send an all clear message to Vault 111, letting the staff know that it was safe to exit the vault. From there, Vault 111 was supposed to be monitored remotely. However, things didn't go quite as planned. Two days after the 180-day mandatory shelter period on April 23, 2078, the security logs indicate that the vault exit was malfunctioning. Tensions began to brew between the security staff and the science staff, and while we don't know the exact details, we can infer that there was a confrontation and whoever managed to survive left the vault. This left Vault 111's residents in cryostasis for the next 150 years. 60 years before the main events of Fallout 4 start, the player is temporarily woken from cryostasis to observe Institute scientists led by Kellogg open the cryopod of the player character's spouse. The scientists retrieve baby Sean while Kellogg murders your spouse and they simply walk off. Sixty years later, you wake up discovering that you alone are the sole survivor. However, once you confront and kill Kellogg and you retrieve his brain implant, you give it to a doctor and good neighbor that allows you to view his memories. One of his memories was while he was in Vault 111, and as you walk by the various cryopods, you'll discover that all of the residents were alive. However, upon inspecting some of the cryopods, Kellogg mentioned something that indicates that the Institute wanted to kill all of the residents of the vault. He says, and I quote, I never knew why we didn't just refreeze the rest of them, but we had our orders. I guess the old man didn't want so many loose ends. Too bad he left alive the one person he shouldn't have. So Kellogg not only killed Nora or Nate and kidnapped Sean, but he was also commanded by the Institute to kill the remaining residents in the vault. 
Now that we've gone over most of the lore behind Vault 111, let's assume all of the residents in Vault 111, other than the sole survivor's spouse, survived the encounter with Kellogg and the Institute. Instead of being killed by the Institute, Nate or Nora is released from their cryopod, as are the other residents in the vault. And assuming most of Fallout 4's story arc largely remain the same, how would the other pre-war vault residents affect the game and the story? I think the first thing that should be fairly obvious is that the player character could no longer be referred to as the sole survivor. Because they aren't the sole survivor. The player character, along with the other Vault 111 residents, would have to leave the vault. While Vault 111 does have some weapons and water purifiers, all of these people would have to migrate to the surface because the vault's food stores have simply run out. After all, the food stores were near running out as soon as the initial 180 days of the experiment had completed. So, the most logical place to start would be to do what the Soul Survivor does and have everyone migrate or return to Sanctuary Hills. Upon talking to Codsworth, many of these people will express shock at their current condition. Some people may express discontent at the current state of the world, especially since they came from a more technologically sophisticated society, complete with supermarkets, toilets, running water, and better communication technology. Other Vault residents may feel ill-equipped to face the harsh realities of the post-apocalyptic wasteland. Ultimately, while we don't know what every single Vault 111 resident's occupation was before the Great War, we do know a little bit about two of the currently deceased residents. We know a little bit about a man named DePetro and another man named Russell, as both of them interacted with a local chem dealer in the neighborhood. According to the ledger terminals, DePetro was apparently high-strung and didn't buy the drugs that the chem dealer was selling, while Russell bought some Excel and hadn't paid the dealer yet, and presumably fed it to his dogs. Otherwise, we don't know very much about either person's skills or what they did for a living, and that of course goes to the other Vault 111 residents as well. We do know that Nate was a former soldier, while Nora was a former lawyer. And based on what we can tell from the game, both seemed to be competent at using firearms and could probably train the less savvy Vault 111 residents on how to properly operate weapons. In the case of Nate, he may have learned some survival skills in the army that would help the Vault 111 residents with hunting. Nate may also have a good knowledge of working with computers and overall may be good with math and science. Nora, on the other hand, would be good at bartering for supplies and as both a persuasive and effective negotiator. At the very least, I think it's safe to say that the vast majority of Vault 111's residents had jobs that required them to have some skills. While these might not necessarily be survival skills, if just one of these people was something like an engineer, a chef, a farmer, or even a nurse or medic, they could probably form a fairly impressive settlement in Sanctuary Hills. Plus, if the Vault 111 residents interacted with the Minutemen the player meets in Concord, that would bring the total population for Sanctuary Hills to about 16 people. This, of course, isn't including Codsworth or the player character. Another question that's worth asking is, how would Sanctuary Hills compare to other Vault Dweller settlements? Ultimately, it may be subpar. In previous Fallout games, we discovered that some of the Vault Tech vaults were designed in such a way so that the vault's inhabitants could recolonize the wasteland. These vaults were usually equipped with at least one Gek, or Garden of Eden Creation Kit, which would allow the vault residents to terraform a specific area of their choosing. In Fallout 2, a Gek was possessed by Vault 8, which ultimately allowed them to build the relatively high-tech Vault City. In Fallout 3, a Gek is used in Project Purity as a means of purifying the water in the capital wasteland. As far as we know, Vault 111 and none of the other vaults in Fallout 4 are known to possess or have ever possessed a Gek, so it can be implied that to a certain degree that Vault Tech never intended for Vault 111's residents to leave. 
or at the very least, it would be a very, very long time until they were permitted to leave. And I say this because Vault 111 was supposed to get an all-clear signal from Vault Tech 180 days after the experiment started. After that, the Vault Tech staff was supposed to leave and the Vault's residents would be monitored remotely. Then again, Vault 81's experiment was undermined and the residents of that vault lived quite well for a long time in isolation. Vault 81 was originally intended as a Vault Tech experiment to discover the ultimate cure for all diseases. However, early on, the original overseer disabled the technology the Vault Tech scientists were using to distribute various diseases to the Vault population. As a result, Vault 81 lived on for quite a long time. However, unlike Vault 111, Vault 81 had food supplies that seemingly allowed them to live in relative isolation for 200 years. Assuming that Vault 81 was activated around the same time that Vault 111 was, Vault 81 didn't open until 2277, 10 years before the events of Fallout 4 start. As we know with Vault 111, food supplies became scarce just beyond the first 180 days of the experiment. And in a sense, I doubt that Vault 111 residents would re-inhabit the vault because there is no food and the facility is in a state of disrepair. So if the Vault 8 and the Vault 81 scenarios are out of the picture, then the best case scenario would be for the members of Vault 111 to integrate with the local population and maybe form a small community in Sanctuary Hills. Because there is simply not enough of them, they aren't going to be able to form a fully-fledged society like we've seen with Vault 8 or Vault 15. Even a smaller community like Vault 81 is bigger than the number of living Vault 111 residents. The worst case scenario is that Vault 111's residents succumb to a fate similar to the residents of Vault 3. This vault was originally supposed to open 20 years after the Great War, but was kept closed longer. Eventually, they left the vault desiring to trade with people on the surface, only to be wiped out by a group of raiders. Now, as I said earlier, the overarching plot for Fallout 4 shouldn't change that much if you were to keep the Vault 111 residents alive. You would still be able to meet Preston and Sanctuary, hunt down Kellogg, and even get into the Institute. However, I do think there would be some considerable impacts on Fallout 4's themes if the other Vault 111 residents did survive. As you're playing through Fallout 4, it's interesting to note that whether you're playing as Nate or Nora, both of these characters are seemingly well-adjusted to the conditions of the post-apocalypse. Save for the few pre-war ghouls that the player can encounter throughout Fallout 4, there are very few NPCs that the player character could relate to. Having a few or all of the vault residents survive cryostasis would have provided the player an opportunity to have the player character interact with people that understand what they're going through because in a certain sense, these Vault 111 residents are also going through pretty much the same thing. It's safe to say that almost everyone in the vault lost some family as the bombs fell. Plus, all of these people are going through the shock of discovering that more than 200 years had passed and almost everyone they ever met or knew is probably dead. Save for their fellow vault residents, the player character, and maybe ghoulified versions of their family. Something that's also worth considering is that a significant number of the people that were in cryostasis witnessed Kellogg murder the player character's spouse. Not all these people did, however the six or so people that were in the same cryopod area as the sole survivor would have seen this murder occur. Perhaps this would have slightly affected certain quests, so for example, maybe one of the pre-war Vault 111 residents could have been a companion and you could have taken him or her with you to help describe Kellogg to Nick Valentine. At the end of the day, it's pretty strange how the incident at Vault 111 went down. From the player's perspective, they see their spouse's cryopod open, Sean is taken away, and their spouse was shot in the process. On the one hand, you could argue that it makes sense that Kellogg would have killed the other vault residents to prevent any witnesses. However, that doesn't really explain why they killed the other residents in the other room. Even if they were conscious in the pod as all of this was happening, they wouldn't have known who shot who. Furthermore, it seems strange to me that the Institute would want to wipe out the other vault residents, yet not kill the sole survivor. 
The Institute ultimately retrieved Sean because they needed his DNA to finish their third generation synth technology. If pre-war unmutated and radiation-free DNA was all they needed, then it seems like it would have been a good idea to keep the other residents alive. It makes you wonder, if all Generation 3 synths are based on Sean's DNA, doesn't that make them genetically similar, thus increasing the risk of some kind of disease coming along and wiping them all out specifically because of their lack of genetic diversity? It's a strange situation to be sure. Why would they need to kill all the Vault 111 residents, and in the case of Sean, couldn't the Institute have recovered or placed him in a cryopod until they managed to find a cure for his disease? But I digress. It would have been really interesting to see what Bethesda would have done if they decided to keep the Vault 111 residents alive. Do you let them escape with the sole survivor, or do you only let the sole survivor leave the vault with the pre-war residents still in suspended animation? Alright guys, that's going to wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, and as always, take care, and I'll see you all next time.